موت على الكشف عالي والكشف عالي جدتي <تصفيق> Come on, come and sit down. Listen very quietly to a story. I love listening to stories, don't you? I'm Mimi and I tell stories. The Squirrels Who Squabbled by Rachel Bright and Jim Field In a towering forest where summer had been, the cool air bit fresh and the mosses grew green, and as autumn edged in and the sky raged red, the sleepiest creatures got ready for bed. While up in a tree swung a flighty young squirrel, who everyone knew as Spontaneous Cyril. Now most foresty folk had seen to their needs, through the plentiful months of mushrooms and seeds. They'd built up their stores so they'd all be well fed. Through the frosting of winter, they glittered ahead. But Cyril, he lived in the now and the here. He'd adventured and partied his way through the year, so his cupboard was empty, his hollow was bare. He hadn't a mouthful of food anywhere. But wait, what was that? Over there, take a look. A single lone pine cone wedged in a nook. He squealed with delight and for very good reason, for inside were the very last nuts of the season. But Cyril wasn't alone. There were more hungry eyes. Yes, plan ahead Bruce had his sights on the prize. Though he'd gathered a mountain of bounty hard fought, Bruce was convinced he was one pine cone short. I simply must have it, he wistfully cried as he dreamt of the fresh, juicy pine nuts inside. So, as Cyril set off on his way to the ground, Bruce, he was also last pine cone bound. They sprinted and scurried with no time to gamble. They scratched at the bark in their scampering scramble. But their panic and haste shook the tips of the spruce and the pine cone it trembled and then it came loose. Oh, both squirrels gave chase at a lightening pace. This was the start of a wild nutty race. It's mine, shouted Cyril. No mine, hollered Bruce. You don't stand a chance. Give up. It's no use. I'm hungry, cried Cyril. This cone is not yours. Stay back, shouted Bruce. This cone's for my stores. It boinged over bushes and flew through the air. It binged on the nose of the slumbering bear. It bounced over boulders, then came to a stop. Then teetered and wobbled and quivered and plop. Both squirrels followed. Oh, the water was fast. Would they learn that they needed each other at last? But each was intent on how he could win, so they didn't quite notice a bird sweeping in. Ooh, Cyril and Bruce, they watched in dismay as their cone disappeared up, up, and away. Come back, shouted Cyril. They're our nuts, exclaimed Bruce. But all hope was gone. It was simply no use. And meanwhile, they drifted right up to the ledge. Greed, it was driving them. Over the edge, Cyril and Bruce. They had taken a fall. They were paying the price for wanting it all. They'd squandered their chances to team up and share. Would their nutty young hopes simply end in despair? Bruised and bedraggled, they swept past dry land. Cyril grabbed at a branch with a trembling hand. Catching Bruce with the other, he heaved and he huffed and dragged him to safety with panting and puffs. They stared at the sky, quite lost in deep thought, until Bruce looked at Cyril and... Let out a snort. How silly we are, he proclaimed all a jiggle. How greedy I've been, <laughs> spluttered Bruce with a giggle. We shall change from today. May the squabbling cease. 
we should celebrate seeing we're both in one piece. From that day and forward, they made a great pair. They would gather together and found they could share. Yes, Cyril and Bruce, they knew in the end, the best thing to share is a laugh with your friend. <laughs> and that's Mimi and 